Okay. Um, in the, the idea that I am presenting here in, uh, on, the, on the bottom, uh, the, the, one of the main idea that we will exploit is the following. Instead of transmitting one packet, when we have to transmit a packet within our frame, we uh, repeat the same packet twice, two times, in two random position within the, the frame. Uh, in, 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 in this packet, there is a pointer to the position where there is the other packet, the same, the twin packet. So in each packet, there is a pointer to the position of the twin packet. So each user, instead of transmitting just one packet, is transmitting the same packet, but two times within the same frame. Um, so you see here, we have these two twin packets for user one, these two twin packets for user two, two twin packets for user three, and so on. Um, so why this is uh, interesting? Because uh, um, as we can see now, we have some uh, situation where we have uh, collisions here. We are, here we have a collision in this time slot. Uh, here we have a clear uh, slot, reception. Here we have another collision and so on. So the idea here is to use uh, interference cancellation. That is a signal processing technique, if you like. So the idea is the following. OK, uh, compared to slotted aloha, let's look at this situation. Now we have collision here, and these two packets are lost. Uh, collision here, collision here. Uh, but this slot, for example, is free. This is free, so I can uh, um, decode this slot, this packet here, because there is no collision here. And if I decode this slot, since if in, in each slot there is a, a a pointer to the twin packet, I know also that there is the same packet here in this position. So in this position there, are, uh, there is a collision, but uh, since I know the, the, the user M packet, I can remove the contribution of this packet in this uh, slot. So interference cancellation, I recover this first, it is clear, then I delete the contribution of this packet in this time slot. And at this point, this is free. This uh, packet can be recovered. And uh, uh, then I recover this packet. There is a, a pointer to the other packet, twin packet, this, this one. I can delete the contribution of this packet from this time slot because I have already decoded it. And so at this point, I can decode this uh, slot and so on and so forth. So I, in this case, I have some collision, I have some uh, slots where I have no collision. I start with the slot where I have no collision and I uh, successively cancel the interference caused by the other uh, packets. And by doing this, I can, uh, in many cases, of course this is not 100% uh, 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 sure, but in many cases I can uh, iteratively cancel all the collisions and I can recover all the packets. This is one of the basic ideas. So, uh, this is slotted aloha. This is another technique that I will uh, discuss later. And I would like to improve uh, with respect to this uh, situation here. So, let's go back to the presentation. Um, so, this is the more or less the history of uh, multiple access and uh, of its, its improvement. Slotted aloha, Abramson, 1970. This is widely known and widely used in many satellite systems, uh, mobile system, uh, cellular, etc., etc. An improvement to slotted aloha is uh, the so-called diversity slotted aloha, uh, 1983, some years ago, introduced a packet repetition, this twin replica that uh, I was mentioning before, to achieve a slight throughput enhancement with respect to slotted aloha at low loads. In this uh, paper, 1983, they have this idea of repeating the packet have these twin packets, but without the idea of interference cancellation. So you have just a slight improvement just for very slow load. Um, the, the key idea of using uh, uh, interference cancellation is quite recent, paper 2007, this one, Casini, the Gaudenzi, the Rio Arrero, Contention Resolution Diversity is Lotted Aloha, this is CRDSA, Contention resolution diversity is not the law. That means this idea of repeating the packet twice 
and uh, using interfe successive interference cancellation to recover the collisions. <coughs> and then another idea, okay, uh, here essentially you are using some kind of a repetition code because you are, instead of transmitting one packet, you are repeating twice the same packet. So it's like to use a, a repetition code with a repetition rate two, so a rate one half code, repetition rate, repetition code. So uh, the idea, there is another uh, big improvement with respect to this is, is uh, has been proposed by Gianluigi Liva in this paper. Uh, the idea is uh, instead of using a, a repetition code with the rate one half, that is repeating twice each packet, uh, try to look if there are other repetition rate that uh, can give better uh, results. And I will show this uh, later also. So uh, about the uh, definition, we assume that there are M users. Uh, there is a, a, a MAC frame of time duration T sub F. There are a given number of uh, uh, slots or, or sub uh, slots, uh, NSA. Each user performs a single transmission attempt within the frame. Uh, either a new packet or a previously collided one if the transmission are allowed, or a new packet if the transmission are not allowed. The, the offered traffic normalized is the ratio this is indicated as G, as usual in the Aloha literature, is M divided by NSA. And is the average number of packet transmissions per slot. We also have the normalized throughput, T, probability of successful packet transmission per time slot. This is quite a, a standard. The idea, as I was saying before, is to adopt interference cancellation to resolve collisions. So if uh, each of the transmitted twin replicas has a pointer to the slot position where there is the other uh, packet, if a packet is detected uh, and decoded, the pointer is extracted and the interference contribution caused by the twin packet is uh, deleted and the procedure is uh, iterated. So if you use this approach, this, the, the approach uh, proposed by uh, uh, Casini, uh, the Gaudenti, the Rio, 90, no, 2007, uh, the peak normalized throughput is 0 0.55. It's very, very high if you compare this with the uh, slot and the law. Because the slot and the law, you know, we know from, from uh, basic uh, <coughs> uh, result of multiple access, we know that the throughput of a slot and the law is 0.37, 37%. And with this idea of, of uh, uh, successive cancellation, we reach 0 0.55. It's an exceptional improvement, very, very important. Uh, we have to transmit twice the same packet. It means that you are spending a little bit more power, 3 dB more power on the average, if you don't uh, include the retransmission for the uh, ALOA system. So the other improvement is uh, this uh, IRSA, um, irregular repeat slotted ALOA, uh, allows a, a variable repetition rate for each packet. Instead of using one half for each packet, Sometimes you repeat a packet twice, sometimes three times, sometimes five times. And uh, uh, the, we, see, we see now that there is a, an important, uh, an important uh, parallel with the iterative decoding of uh, low density parity check codes with code of graphs. In this sense, uh, uh, we can assume that uh, we have some slots, these are the time slots of our frame, and in some slots we have just one packet, in some other slots we have two packets, for example here, in this slot, in the second slot we have two packets transmitted by two different users, then we have a collision, this is a, a time slot where we have a collision. So in some cases we have a collision, some other we have no collisions. So this situation is very similar to the, is identical actually, to the, uh, the, the iterative decoding of uh, low density parity check codes. And we can start essentially for the BEC, for the binary erasure uh, channel. We can start with the, the slots where we have no collision, that are, that are the slots here with just one edge arriving. We start from this, this slot is clear, there is no collision, so we can start from this, we can recover this edge 
once we recover this edge, we can recover the position, we can remove these other two edges. These edges here are the repetition of the same packet. So we can uh, remove the interference cancellation it consists in removing the edges and so on and so forth. We iterate through the, the, the bipartite graph of the, of the channel. Um, so the, the other idea that we had in time is to uh, further improve the situation by allowing, instead of having a repetition uh, uh, code, like in this case, we have uh, essentially we have a repetition <coughs> two code for each user. Instead of having a repetition two code for each uh, user, we say, okay, what uh, if uh, we don't uh, want to uh, use a repetition code, but we want to use uh, another code? Um, we say age or uh, read Solomon or whatever code, an A and K uh, code that is not necessarily a repetition code. And this is the idea of coded slotted aloha. In coded slotted aloha, we have sub packets that are encoded by an N uh, K linear uh, erasure correcting code. And we designed the, all the uh, situation in order to have a um, um, uh, situation that we can handle with the usual uh, methods of uh, codes over graphs. Uh, in particular, we have uh, this NHK linear packet level erasure correcting code picked randomly from a given set that we have to design properly uh, of uh, candidate codes, all with the same dimension K, you see here, and sub packets are transmitted over NH slots, picked at random, and uh, at the receiver, the, we have still the iterative interference cancellation process uh, that is combined with the local um, map ratio decoding. So this is uh, our proposal that we, we proposed this uh, recently, last year. And we have presented this uh, in the last uh, summer conference recently. So the idea is the following. We have a, uh, we have a, for user one, we have uh, the information Information packet is divided in two sub packets, and uh, we have two sub packets of information, and we add one packet of parity. So we, in this case, instead of uh, repeating the packets twice, having uh, uh, a repeat code with the rate one half, uh, we have a code with the rate uh, two third, in, in the sense that we add a parity packet uh, every two information packets. Uh, for the user two, we have another rate. We have uh, for two sub packets of information, we add the two uh, parity sub packets. So we have a rate one half again, but this is rate two over four to be more precise, and uh, rate uh, two third again, and so on and so forth. So according to some distribution, we give some uh, codes to each user, and, and then once we receive all these, we start again with the uh, iterative decoding uh, the receiver side. We can see that this is a uh, uh, essentially um, equivalent to the decoding of what is called W generalized LDPC code. W generalized LDPC code, uh, I don't have time to enter into the detail, but our, our class of generalization of uh, LDPC codes. Um, and uh, so the idea, as I was trying to, to uh, explain, is the following. Uh, we have a bipartite graph. This uh, is a, a, a user. This user is repeating, uh, is, is transmitting three packets. There are three edges, one, two, three. This user is transmitting three packets in three position, random picture position within the frame. This uh, user is transmitting three packets randomly picked within our frame, and this is transmitting again three packets in this case. So we have some free uh, slots here. We start with the decoding of this and we remove these two edges, one and two, these two. Once we remove these two edges, we can also, one, two, three edges, you see? These are the clear, no, uh, yes. We start with is. At a given point, repeating iteratively uh, the, uh, decoding the, the graph, we arrive at uh, uh, decoding all packets. We uh, also did uh, the asymptotic analysis 
and we, we, we found the, the, what is the distribution of the codes that we have to use here, what is the set of codes that we have to use in order to have optimal results. I will skip this part. Essentially, the, the design is made on the, by using the exit chart analysis, that is quite a standard tool in iterative decoding. And I will just give you the um, results. Here we have the throughput S versus the offered uh, traffic G. And uh, here we have the curve for the slotted aloha. This is well known curve for the slotted aloha. The maximum throughput is 0.37, 1 over E. Then it, the curve goes down like this, as you know. This is slotted aloha. And then we have some results for the irregular repeat slotted aloha and the, for the, the coded slotted aloha. This is a generalization of the regular repeat slotted aloha. And uh, you, you can see that uh, quite amazingly, we have this result. For example, this is for rate one, uh, sorry, rate three over five, three over five. This is for rate uh, uh, one half, for example. Let's look at this one half. This is the one half with the irregular repetition of, of packets with the distribution that is derived from the exit chart analysis, a given distribution. And this is the same result for rate one half with the coded dotted alone. And you see that the, the, the throughput is much higher than that of dotted alone. So the throughput is very, very interesting. And this is, so, so the first observation is that with this new scheme, you, you reach very high throughputs. You can reach 0.8. You can go beyond 0.8 if you allow a repetition of the order of one third. This is repetition one third, rate one third on the average, to be compared with the 0.37. So I think that this is quite interesting. And uh, the other thing is that uh, the, the throughput line here uh, and the, the versus the offered law load is on the line S equal to G this is S equal to G, that means that if you are working here, for example, the offered load is 0.3 and the, the throughput is 0.3, means that all the packets go through the, the channel. You don't need the retransmission because all the packets are going to be recovered correctly without the need for retransmission. So this is a, a, another very important uh, feature of this scheme that uh, essentially uh, you don't need retransmission if you are working on this on, on these points up to here, for example, here for the uh, rate one third. If you're working here, uh, offer it traffic uh, uh, 0.7, uh, throughput 0.7. You don't need the retransmission. That is amazing because the retransmission, even is not at all, is very, I mean, it's very demanding in terms of complexity of all the system to, uh, to design. Um, So these are our asymptotic results, assuming that your frame is quite long, is long enough, and uh, in order to, to uh, uh, for the iterative decoder to uh, use all the uh, potential uh, related to the analysis that are also related to exit analysis. Uh, but what uh, if you uh, have a, a finite number of, uh, of uh, slots per frame, so these are some uh, results. Uh, this is the packet loss rate for our coded slotted aloha based on uh, some degree distributions. And this is the asymptotic result derived from theory. Uh, the threshold for this kind of distribution is 0.977. So very close to one packet per frame. In theory, if you have a very large number of uh, slots per frame. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, instead of uh, um, an infinitely large number of slots per frame, you have uh, uh, 5,000 slots per frame. This is the, the curve. So 10 to the minus 2 packet loss rate. You still have uh, offered uh, traffic. You can still handle offered traffic well um, above 0.9, so very, very, very high. Uh, with the 1,000, again, this curve, and uh, 500, this curve. So you can see that even with the if you have a finite number of slots per frame, still you have an incredible uh, large uh, throughput if compared with the slotted a lot, this 
seven here. So uh, I've uh, presented this idea of coded dotted ALOA. Each packet divided into sub packets encoded through a linear packet reservoir in code, iterative interference cancellation. Uh, this shares several aspects with LDPC codes and uh, in particular with doubly generalized LDPC codes of the razor channel. So the analysis that we can make is the following. Uh, uh, we know that uh, in general in transmission uh, we know that we can uh, do forward error correction and this is a means to control the, the errors in our uh, transmission. We can do forward error correction, so that is we can include some parity bits or symbols or whatever in transmission a priori or we can do uh, automatic request request, we can transmit, and uh, in case uh, of failure, we can uh, ask for the retransmission. And this, uh, this situation is somehow the situation that we have in our scheme. Zotted uh, uh, is based on retransmissions. If something goes wrong, you, you require for a retransmission. In our coded Zotted Aloha, we are doing a forward collection, essentially. We are transmitting uh, some pack parity packets and uh, based on these parity packets, we don't need to add uh, retransmissions. And we are, uh, we are closing, we are approaching an efficiency of one packet per slot without retransmissions. In theory, with a large number of slots, of course, but uh, even for a finite number of slots per frame, the, the uh, throughput, the maximum throughput, is very very high. And this essentially uh, is, is the. Final uh, slide. Uh, these are the, some uh, uh, papers when, where we presented this idea for the first time uh, recently. Thank you for your attention.